everybody. We are gonna be doing a trial here. We're in my car. We just left Miami. We are going to be printing while we're driving. There's a Prusa Mini behind me. It is plugged into a battery pack back here. And technically it should not have enough power, but we have it also plugged into the car. So we're gonna see how viable it is to 3D print while driving. Right now the Prusa Mini is just chilling, drawn 31 watts. And when it was getting started, when it was heating up, it was 143 watts. We'll check in throughout the drive, or Amber's going to because I'm driving, and we're gonna see what kind of wattage this thing is drawing throughout the print. We're gonna time-lapse the print so we can see what it looks like. It's gonna be a 200% Cali Dragon. Let's go ahead and get this thing started, if you don't mind. This is the Prusa that we did the upgrade on for the Revo Micro. All right, 0.4 Cali Dragon. And uh, unfortunately, I left the 0.6 at the house, so. Yeah, we're gonna start this Cali Dragon, get that thing rolling. All right. And there you guys go. So we're back there, we're behind the driver. We were gonna put it behind Amber, but she wants to lay back and go to sleep. Well, I can also so. reach it better this way and keep an eye on it, so. I might break my neck trying to look behind me. There you guys go. We are gonna start this print. Let's get the first layer or two rolling. Okay, and right now, wow, it's only drawing 37 watts, seriously? That's it? That's nothing. We are, we're only drawing 30 watts, so we can charge it at 48. So if it draws like eh, 46, 45, wow, this actually might work better than I expected. All right, we will check in throughout. We're gonna get on the road. So we have a four and a half hour drive back to Tampa. It is gonna get dark. So I don't exactly know how we're gonna deal with that just yet. I'm gonna have to put on a light or something. But yeah, we're gonna get on the road. See you guys later. All right, we are on the road, right? Yep. So we're heading back to Orlando. We have 284 miles to go, and the print's rolling. Uh, we got the Cali Dragon going in Jesse PLA neon yellow, uh, because hopefully the lights don't blow it out. I don't know, man. We got a light on the top of my seat, because it is going to be very dark in about an hour and a half. But we got some new, since it just started printing when we filmed the first part. Now, let's see where we're at for wattage, because it's actually a lot lower than I expected. I expected the Mini to kind of settle in around like 100, 115 watts, but... Uh, it's about between 50 to 70. So oh, it's right, you're seeing it? About 85, so it keeps kind of fluctuating. That's likely because of the bed, but it's not tipping 100, which is interesting. And that means that little battery pack, which that is a 300 watt hour lithium iron phosphate or life PO4 battery pack that we actually use for mobile 3D scanning. The Mini is drawing about 30 watts less than I expected. So given it's a three and a half hour print, we're only drawing 80 watts, we should be more than fine, especially when we're also adding in 40. So the net loss is about 40 watts constant. So we should be good to go here. It's just a fun little way to show that yes, you can 3D print in a car. But yeah, guys, we're gonna get to driving. Now the sun's like literally in my face. So I'm gonna focus on driving. We'll touch base in just a little bit. I'm gonna show you the print real quick. Ready? Costume change. And it's late, uh, hence the supplementary lighting. Is that a Tesla? I just got passed by a Tesla. So we are in the middle of nowhere, Florida, driving dead across the state on Alligator Alley, or 75, but it's called Alligator Alley. Nine o'clock at night, dark outside, supplementary lighting. So far, the print seems to be going good. I am told there's some artifacting in it. We'll be curious to see, one, what it looks like when we get to our destination, but then two, what it looks like on its own. The goal of this is to see is it viable to 3D print in a car? So far, the answer appears to be yes. Do you take any quality hits? I think yes. But do they matter? That's what we're gonna find out. I used a rough filament for it because we were concerned. We only brought two colors with us. We brought neon yellow and blue whale gray, uh, both from printed solid. The concern was that blue whale gray would be just too dark and it wouldn't work. So we went with the neon yellow, which might be a pain because it's going to be really difficult to show it on camera. Uh, I'm told it's not perfect, but I think we do have to kind of verify 
what the one stationary looks like before we can really judge anything. So Amber's been checking in on it. I have no clue what it looks like. So what do you think? Is it looking okay? I say it looks okay for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, uh, my grin's in. We'll see what the standstill printer print looks like. There's really not too much to this. I something that I want to try. I know Joel Telling did it with his Ford Maverick, uh, but that has a dedicated 400 watt power port. My 20 year old Honda doesn't, and I know that a lot of your vehicles don't either. So what we have used, of course, links to all of this will be in the description. We have your standard 12 volt plug going to a cup holder style 150 watt inverter. And I think they're like less than 20 bucks. And then we have the 300 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack that we're using for this whole thing. Of course, with a 300 watt output. Normally we would use that for 3D scanning. So it's our, it's our portable 3D scanning battery so that we can go scanning without a noisy generator and all that. But the system works great so far. I think really the big drawback right now is it's on a seat on a towel. So there's lots of room for it to bounce. Had we looked at something more stationary print from, maybe we would have been okay. But we will touch base with you all. See you later. 10 p.m. on the money, it's done. Just finished up. Where are we at on the battery percentage? 71%. 71%. About a two and a half hour print, right? Something like that? Not right. Yeah. So dropped a little bit under 30% of the entire battery power by printing something while we are driving. I would like to point out that basically every single car that has passed us has kind of slowed down because we have a light in the back seat to see what the hell there's a light on in the back seat for. No major issues to report. I would say the biggest challenge so far has been the friggin' filaments. And had we had more time, I think I probably would have rigged up a pole with a couple of zip ties in between the headrest posts and then put the filament on there. Otherwise, I'm pretty cool with it. So, would we do this again? If we had to, I guess. I mean, at least we know we can. I think that's exactly where I stand as well. Is it cool? Yeah. Is it useful? No. Like, if you got a deadline and you got a print in your car on the way to get someplace, okay, fine. But, like, how niche use case do we need to get? I'm excited to see it. It's been pretty behind me the whole time, so I have no idea what it looks like. I think it's gotta be a little bit better when it's not moving. A printer with dual Z, or at least a non-cantilevered Z axis, would probably perform better. I would expect it to, and it's gonna have more rigidity. Something like, hilariously, a CR10, because it has the diagonal brace, or any printer with or a Cartesian printer with diagonal braces would likely perform considerably better because you're gonna have less flex. I, I would guess in this kind of a game, it's all about reducing you know, ambient vibrations from literally the road. The big thing is just kind of dealing with those vibrations. So a printer with maybe some sort of diagonal brace or I don't know, maybe a Delta would be better for something like this. I'd be curious to see how different printers perform. But again, this was really more of a proof of concept. I'm not probably going to put a Delta in the back seat of my car. That just seems ridiculous. But maybe just the right kind of ridiculous. Let me know down in those comments. In my head, the one stationary makes so much more sense to look better. But is that percentage going to matter? That's the question, so. Okay, we have the two dragons here. We've got our road dragon, uh, evidenced by the fact that I wrote road on the bottom of it. And we have our regular dragon, which is evidenced by the fact there's nothing on the bottom of it. And yes, we did kind of screw up by using quite literally the worst functional color to record with ever. There is a measurable quality difference between the two, but I don't think this light does it justice. So looking at these two dragons, our biggest difference comes kind of at the bottom. We can see lines here, here, here. 
You can also see it up here on the tail. The dragon that was not printed on the road possesses none of those issues. That is likely due to road vibrations, and you can actually see how bad the vibrations are simply because of how much the camera itself is shaking and actually comes off of the part during the time lapse. Is this that big of a deal? It might be to you, it might not be. They both look pretty good. If all you had was this one, it's probably okay. If you know nothing other than this one, you're probably fine. But if you know this to be your main quality and you go to something like that, it might be something that bothers you. Does it bother me? No. Would I sell it? No. Because we have a distinct standard. There are definitely differences. Let me know what you guys think down in those comments. We'll pass it back to Grant and Amber for the outro. It was fun visiting family. It was good. We did not see any wild iguanas, but we did get a visit from Dade County's finest. Um, full story of that will be on our Patreon. So if you want to hear about our encounter with police on our first time in Miami, my first time in six years, her first time ever in Miami, over and join our Patreon. But that's all we got for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome, guys. Have a good one. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters. Remember, if you want to support the efforts here at this channel, you can do so by clicking those links in that description or that join button right below the video. These dragons were an interesting one. Uh, bad color choice overall, especially on cameras like this. They're totally blown out. But I think it still shows that it is possible, but just because we can doesn't mean we should. Speaking of things that can but probably shouldn't, right below me is my first look at the Snapmaker A350T, a machine that has way too many issues with this end user license agreement for me to recommend. And right next to that will be the build video for this Prusa Mini, the one that we did the Revo Micro upgrade on. I will see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.